everybody. That's powerful. Amen. Amen. I appreciate Pastor and Sister Staten very much. Um, one of my favorite things about the word that I was thinking about was uh, Psalms 119, verse 130. It says, the entrance of thy word giveth light. It giveth understanding the simple. And I'd always imagine myself just light kind of filling me up as I'm reading the word, you know. You don't have to imagine, though, because in the spirit realm, that's what's happening. The power of God is illuminating us. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So, um, and hopefully in the vein of what the Spirit is doing here, following Pastor State, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the Lordship of Jesus. Amen. Acts chapter 2, verse 36 says, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Lord Jesus, let your word go forth, God. Lord, your power is here, Jesus, and your word is here. Your spirit, Lord Jesus, is here. And Lord, let them work in conjunction, God, and let the... Nothing is impossible here today. Nothing. So the, the term Lord uh, in the Bible comes from kurios, the Greek word there. And it means a couple different things, amen? It could mean everything from a, like me calling a, a gentleman sir, or it could mean all, all the way up to the level of God. Amen? That one Greek word. Thera's Greek lexicon says, uh, gives a couple definitions. He to whom a person or thing belongs, about which he has power of deciding, master, lord. The possessor and disposer of a thing. Keep in mind here, we just read that God has made Jesus lord. Amen? He's lifted him up. Jesus, who is God, amen, has been elevated to that position, amen, because of what he's done on the cross. The Bible says he, he lived a perfect life, amen. He went to the cross, shed his blood for us, and now he's resurrected. Praise the Lord, amen. Another definition is owner, one who has control of the person. Sovereign person is a title and honor, expressive of respect, kind of like we said, sir. And then finally, the title is given to God, the Messiah, amen. 751 times that word is listed in the New Testament alone, from Matthew all the way to Revelation. It's a, it has a very powerful resonance in the New Testament. Amen? What does it mean to make Jesus Lord? And is he Lord? Amen? Well, to say Jesus Lord is Lord could mean two different things to two different people. Amen? And we'll, we'll kind of talk about what it would mean to an unbeliever. Because if I said to an unbeliever, Jesus is Lord... They've got to come up with a couple different things. Amen. And apologists of old, going back to C.S. Lewis, they believed in what was called the apologetics trilemma. Uh, you might have heard Pastor talk about it in the past, but apologetics trilemma would be uh, basically three tri and then lemma, which would be premises or presuppositions or assertions. You can only draw three conclusions if you have integrity facing that claim that Jesus is Lord. And if you, read, if you know what the Bible claims that Jesus is Lord, there was the, either one, it's true, and that he is who he says he is, he's God, or it's false, which means uh, two different things you can pull away from false. He, either he is a liar or he is crazy. And so apologetics have said that in the past. People who give an answer, apologetics, is somebody who gives an answer to, to what uh, the Bible says, explains so as if, I'm a, if, if when I heard that Jesus is Lord, I had to come up with a conclusion. Is what this guy is saying true? You know, or, or is he a liar? Or is he just crazy? You can't say that, that Jesus uh, is a good teacher like the world will tell you. You cannot. You have to throw that out. Because there is no claim of that anywhere in the scriptures. Right? Just a great teacher. Yes, he was a teacher. I heard uh, one time uh, when I saw Narnia, which uh, is a book by, written by the, the, the book... C.S. Lewis wrote called Narnia, The Chronicles of Narnia. The one of the actors said, oh yeah, Jesus is one of the great prophets, just like Buddha, just like Confucius or whatever. But you cannot make that claim. You have to throw that out. So either he is who he says he is, or he's not completely. Amen? Jesus is Lord. I have to look at that. Amen? But for us as believers, what does it mean that Jesus is Lord? And, and, and what is the benefit of Jesus being Lord, and what is the consequence of that? Amen? Of course, we believe that Jesus is Lord. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen? 
Those of us who can make it, who know that Jesus is Lord, we've tasted that the Lord is good. There's no doubt about it. His power has come into our life. We would have to be crazy to say that Jesus is not Lord. To know, based on the evidence, to be such a cloud of witnesses that Jesus is not Lord would be crazy. He is very much Lord. Amen? To the, to the believer, there's four points I just want to touch on. If you stay with me, uh, the last one is worth all the first three combined. Amen? Jesus is Lord. What does it mean? It means cost. For us to say that Jesus is Lord truly means cost. Families are fractured. Jobs are withheld. And lives are taken by the claim, by people, that Jesus is Lord. We would love to tell you that, 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 that uh, what some of these preachers out there are saying is true. That yes, you can just add them to your life. And maybe you would get on well in this world. But Jesus as Lord is going to cost you, amen? When he has preeminence in your life, when you are bowing the knee today, amen, to the Lord and obeying his word, there's going to be a cost, amen? And it's totally worth it. Often it will mean our, our, uh, our reputations, amen? He said a servant is not greater than his master. Jesus, even when he was in his earthly ministry, he paid the ultimate price. And he expects us to do the same. John 15, 20 declares that. There was a man by the name of Polycarp. Back in 155 AD is when he passed away. He was uh, the bishop of Smyrna. You read the scriptures, you can read about Smyrna. It's one of the seven churches addressed by John the Revelator in the book of Revelations. But Polycarp was a disciple of John the, Bap or John the, uh, the Revelator, John the Apostle, the Beloved. And so he had come to a point in his life, he was 86 years old, where the emperor had arrested him for being Christians. The Christians were being arrested at that point in time. And they said to him that you, we will let you live. We're killing Christians here left and right. There, he was, I believe, the 12th martyr of Smyrna. He said, but we're going to let you live if you will deny the Lordship of Christ, and you will say the Emperor is Lord, that the Emperor is Lord. Of course, he denied that. He said Jesus is Lord, and he lost his life. Amen? Now he's up in glory, which is a beautiful thing. Some antiquity tells us that, that it was supernatural, the way they tried to kill him. Some say that, that flames could not touch him while they were burning him. Powerful stuff. But a great man of God, nonetheless. He knew that Jesus was Lord. And today, as us as believers must know that Jesus the Lord is going to cost us everything. I remember my mother, uh, when I came into the church, uh, would argue me, uh, with me about doctrine and things like that. And, and uh, I just, I just, I stopped arguing with her, just believing that Jesus is Lord. And I kept following after Jesus. Amen. And shortly afterwards, my mom stopped arguing with me. And she surrendered to the Lord. Amen. And she's on a journey right now. Amen. Jesus is Lord, it means cost, and it also means allegiance. Saying Jesus is Lord means pledging loyalty when someone or something tries to dethrone him from your life. So one time I remember when I was engaged, I'll give you a little story. I was engaged, uh, not to the beautiful woman that I'm married to here, but I was engaged to uh, a woman when I came into the Lord, uh, and I had an experience with Jesus Christ. And it was so profound for me because I asked God if he was real. Many of you know that. Maybe some of you haven't heard that. And God responded. He came. His spirit came into my car when I was praying. The power of God came such, such, with such strength. And it was so profound that I, I could not deny the experience that I had. So I knew from that moment on, just snap of a finger, everything changed. Just one, one moment in my car changed everything from my life. And so my fiance got news of that, you better believe it, immediately. I said, you know what? Jesus is real, and God is real, and he's going to be Lord of my life. He, his word is true, and I remember lifting up the book the first day that I experienced. I said, this Bible here, I'm not sure if I had one or I bought it, but I said, this Bible here is going to have everything to do with my life from now on. And I remember her mother calling my mother. What's this crazy thing going on with this young man here? And my mom's like, I have no idea. And my, my, my ex-fiance was 
argumentative. There was a lot of uh, back and forth. But ultimately, I said, Jesus is Lord. And she had to go. So it cost me, but I was rewarded much, by, much better with the life that I had. Amen. I'm just saying, I don't think it cost me anything, actually. I was rewarded for that one. It's a bad example. No. But I had allegiance to Jesus Christ. And many of us here know what that feels like. It means it, it's going to cost us something. To say Jesus is Lord means it's going, to, it's going to mean allegiance. It means that some things for me are off the books for me. I, I mean, I don't, I, I, I want to listen to my pastor, what his instructions for my church. You know, I remember having a job and I was just like praying to God that it would not interfere. You know, and I remember having to make that decision. You know, there's, there's a lot of careers that I can't have right now. Amen. Especially I know I'm called in the ministry. Amen. Okay, so it also means that submission and trust. Amen. Jesus the Lord means our submission and trust. We can trust and submit because he has our best in mind. Psalms 119 verse 68 says, Thou art good and doest good. Teach me thy statutes. He's good. He, he means good for us. To say Jesus is Lord is okay for me to learn his statutes. To learn his word. Why? Because he's got his best in mind for me. I remember those decisions that I had to make. Amen. That uh, I had to decide, you know, am I going to follow this Jesus with all my heart? It was, it's a very intense decision. But ultimately, what I had before wasn't working out for me. I remember just death, death, death. You know, the, the Bible says the soul that sins will die. Well, that doesn't mean eternal damnation only. It does. Separation from God, that's horrible. But it also means death and decay and everything else you touch. I remember relationships just dying. I think about, could I have lifelong relationships with people? Well, the, the sin comes in and just destroys those things. It destroys innocence. So even people that I thought were my friends, it's just like, you know, it's been tarnished. Everything's been tarnished and tainted by sin. Careers failing. Ambitions failing, hopes dying out, amen? But with Jesus, he's got my best intentions. So I can say that Jesus is Lord knowing that it's going to be okay. Amen? Hallelujah. God has been good to those that have made Jesus Lord. Amen. Even in afflictions, Psalms 119 verse 49 through 50, Remember the word unto thy servant, upon which thou hast caused me to hope. This is my comfort and my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. Amen? So remember the word unto thy servant. Well, there's lots of words that talk about deliverance, that talk about promises of God. Those are things that we can hope in when we're going through afflictions. The Bible says many of the afflictions are the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from them all. Those are powerful promises. And yes, we might be martyred, but trust me, the moment you go into glory, you're with the Lord. And there's no way that you would ever want to come back to this once you get to that position. Amen. So the fourth point is it means joy. It means joy. So I told you that the fourth one would be worth all of the other ones. Easily. It means allegiance. It means cost. It means submission and trust. Knowing that he means good. And what are some of the good things? Well, joy. It means joy. John 15, 11 says, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Yes. Amen? He spoke the word of God to us, the thing the pastor was talking about, that his joy would remind, re remain in us. That joy is so powerful. I can tell you, even recently, there was a day of fasting, and, and uh, I can tell you that... Uh, just the enemy was coming in, bombarding me. Just puffing up, tearing down. Puffing up, just it was like a whirlwind. And if you've ever been, you know what that feels like. Does anybody know what that feels like? You just, you know, Brother Baxter used to say that demons are just banging across their mind constantly, like a pinball. And, uh, and I remember just like reading the Word, and reading the Word of God, like Pastor was talking about, reading the Word of God, declaring it. But then I remember just saying one simple thing. Because the this, this spirit, I just it comes like an unction. It comes like a pressure. When you are under, under attack, you'll know you're under attack 
because your peace isn't there, and you'll know because you will feel uh, you'll feel pressure, just like intense pressure without the peace. Amen. Uh, you'll have negative thoughts. You'll have thoughts. To, you know, you've heard of fight or flight. You'll have thoughts of fighting and and and, and fleeing, all kinds of stuff. For what? You don't even know it's the enemy attacking you, right? But I remember saying, I'm not going to submit to any of those ideas. And I just remember saying, Jesus is Lord. And when I said, Jesus is Lord, literally, the atmosphere of my mind changed. There was a peace. It was like somebody took me out of a pressure cooker and just put me into a large place where there was just nothing but peace. Amen? Jesus is Lord. He's Lord. And so, I will not surrender to the thoughts of the enemy. I will not surrender to the ambitions or whatever the, the devil's plan is for me, whatever my own ambitions are, Jesus is Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And I know, you know, when we talk about the things that we have to sacrifice, that was for me personally, you know, and I just think that uh, all of us have to kind of weigh in. Where does Jesus fit in our life? Is he Lord? Amen. And, I mean, you know when God is asking you to, to do something. You know, and he's going to ask for more and more as he becomes a greater Lord and greater Lord. I believe it is a progressive Lordship. He even says in his word that, that there's things that I cannot tell you right now because you couldn't handle it. And I know that's true because now at 10 years living for Jesus Christ, that there's things that I probably wouldn't have done or I would have ran. You know, I don't know. Maybe not, but it, there are certain things. You know, what if you said to, to uh, the Zenobias, hey, I'm going to send you into this country when you weren't ready for it, you know? But because he did at the point in time that he asked you to, you said he's Lord and you did it. Pastor Staten has done, Sister Staten have done thousands of things throughout their career, 47 years. And Jesus is Lord, we submit. Decisions that I make, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. There's times when I've come up with my own ideas and it sounded really good. But then all of a sudden I hear the Lord say, what are you doing? You know, this is not what I'm telling you to do. So I have to say, Jesus is Lord, no matter how, how, how good it looks. Amen? And when I do, there's just tremendous joy and peace, which you cannot purchase. There's nothing in this world that you can submit to that can give you what Jesus can give you. Eternal life, peace, joy, power over the serpents and the scorpions and the, dirt, the, the unclean spirits. Amen? Joy everlasting. Hallelujah gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, a family, he puts the, the solitary in families, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And so to put Jesus as Lord, we put his word in preeminence. It puts the first and foremost in our life. It's our instruction book. That's how we make Jesus Lord. We surrender to it. That's how we know about repentance. How did I know to repent? How did I know to what do I, that I have to turn from the way I was living to the way I, 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 that God wants me to live. We said to turn away from sin and turn to Him. Amen? And I remember how hard that was because God, I'm not a perfect individual. I am broken. I'm a mess. There's no way I can live up to what you are asking me to do. But then I found out in His Word that He's going to give me power to do it. And He gave me power to do it when I received the Holy Ghost. Amen. It was a, it's an awesome thing. His lordship came in. His spirit filled me. There was a sword that came and it broke off things that for 20 years of my life I could not break off from. Negative thoughts, addictions, uh, uh, habits, things that I could never imagine of breaking off. The Lord just came and did it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So when you put the word of God and you surrender to him, that is what it means to make him Lord. And it always pays dividends. Amen. You'll, you will not lose with making him Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Um, why don't you stand with me? And uh, reminds me of an old song. <laughs> Jesus be the Lord of all. Jesus be the Lord of all. Jesus be the Lord of all. The kingdoms of my heart. Jesus be the Lord of all. Jesus be. Oh, Lord. 
so rich.